All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Three Comic Money. Uh, this week, we're very honored to have with us uh, Axel Alonzo here with us from uh, AWA Studios, uh, and he's going to talk to us about all the awesome books they have coming out, but he's also going to play our game. And uh, as you know, we have Mike and we have Pete with us. We're comicbookinvest.com, and we are Three Comic Money. Uh, and you can always check out the show and tales from Flipside. But uh, th thanks for joining us, and let's get ready. And, and Axel, you get to pick the comics, uh, the the one, the one, two, or three. And Pete's going to take us all through. Right. All right. Yeah. So I. All right. I'll one go of the cards has the, the, the answer hidden beneath it. So you pick one, two, or three. If you're right, I'll you go, start us off, or whoever is I'll right. You pick two. Okay. All right. Number two. I'll go with three. Three. So Mike's stuck with one. So I, so I have one. Yep. So I have one. Yep. All right. Well, that's uh. It's gonna go. Huh? Dang it! I was no. The image you sent earlier was on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I get to go first. Uh, the, the theme is crime, so this is this is gonna be some fun. And Axel, I mean, why'd you choose crime as sort of the theme? Well, it's my favorite genre to read, and I've edited tons of crime comic books, tons of them in my day. Okay, I love it. I love it. The genre. You do. Awesome. Me too. Crime. Um, so what you were you're talking to us earlier before we turned the camera on. So you were talking about one of the books that's sort of inspiration for crime, uh, by David Lampham. Uh, yeah. yeah. David Lampham's Straight Bullets was very influential for me. I love that comic book. The original volume. It was set in the 1970s and it was a bunch of sort of low rent criminals getting into little hijinks and having problems. And it was really it was wonderful. All in black and white. Oh, you know, yeah. It was very simple, simple, clean, lean, and mean. I loved it. All right. Well, for me, I'm going to choose – when you said crime, I mean, of course, if you if people watch the show, they know I'm a Spider-Man junkie. So I had to go with Spider-Man Noir. Uh, I actually have several here. I'm only actually choosing one cover, but I have the – I have some of them from the first series. It's a gorgeous cover. Then I have some from the Eyes Without a Face series uh mm -hmm. but the new series that came out had this gorgeous cover of patrick o'keefe did um it's Ooh, a one for 25. Got one. Yeah, so but... it's just gorgeous it's hot it's a it's one for 25 but it's selling for 45 50 dollars or more i'm not sure what it's selling for on today but uh i was so mm -hmm. stoked to get it he's the artist who actually helped do some of the movie for edge of Sp as a spider verse yeah so mm -hmm. but spider man is just one of those great little characters um and I wish the movie had done him a little more justice, like made him a little more, but he's still just such a cool, yeah. I love yeah. the entire concept of uh, dropping people into the forties and bringing them up and everything. Um, so that's, that is my first pick. Yeah. So, cool. uh, actually, what was your, let's go your next. So let's see what your pick is going to be. I think it's right on the same kind of topic there. So what's oh, Luke Cage? Yeah. Luke Cage Noir. Yeah. I edited that book. That was Mike Benson, Adam Glass, and Sean Martinborough. It was part of that noir universe where we imagine small superheroes in the noir setting in the 40s and 50s. So in this case, we did Luke Cage. What was fun about the book was that you never knew in the series if he had steel hard skin or not. <laughs> oh. Was he just bluffing? <laughs> and no one wanted to call the bluff? Or was it, or was it real? Nice. Oh, you can cool. see him there, not, not in the costume. As a 1940s badass, you know. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, you. I've always loved these covers too. Yeah, they're so. How many uh, noir covers were? Did you edit all of them, or just the Luke Cage one? No, I edited just the Luke Cage one. I also did okay. Daredevil, Devil Noir. Oh okay, yeah, that, those are movie. great covers back too. Then, when I edited those books, I had a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I back when kid. I read those books, I had a full head it's of hair. Too. Yeah, <laughs> I could wipe Christ. the hair out of my eyes as I was looking at the covers. <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love that book uh so and th that only did that just was that just a four issue did it have a follow-up one or was or is it just with a four issue run it was a four or five issue series okay. same thing with daredevil noir okay four or five issue series yeah <clears throat> they were started at the beginning and an end very simple and clean okay yeah all right pete what you got all right uh well i love that noir stuff like Again, when crime, when I heard crime was our topic, I, I got excited because I, I love crime. I love the small time crime, any crime movies, crime books. I love reading those Raymond yeah. Chandler novels, the Dashiell Hammett stuff, like that noir stuff really gets to me. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I had thought about these only because I just grabbed these today for 50 cents mm -hmm. each. These, uh, I think it's oh, a yeah. J. 
Jim Silks, these American Century covers, because they're just American, awesome yeah. covers. Oh, yeah. But I couldn't squeeze them into my three, since I only picked three. <laughs> so for my first one, I went with, and I could have done the entire list, Brubaker and Sean Phillips, but I only went with this one for now, The Sleeper. Yeah, yeah. Three. I just like this cover, but I love this series. This this idea of this, like, a, you know, it's kind of like crime and super villains, and he's undercover, and it, it was just a great series to me. So I had to try to work that one in. I, again, I got a ton of the Brubaker Phillips stuff behind me because yeah, 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 it is some great, great comic uh, crime stuff. But yeah, well, dude, who people. did that cover? That's dude, Phillips. Suck. Who did that cover? That's Sean Phillips. That Sean? Painted. Who's, Who's Sean? cover? Sean Phillips. Yeah, Sean is Phillips. It? Yep. Oh <laughs> man, I need that ASAP. That is a gorgeous cover. Right, see, Chris, oh, I'm jealous. I had the I have the first God, four issues. I'm trying so. to hold down my collection, not add to it. I hate you. <laughs> Oh, it's a great read too. It's you guys that's have cover junkies, aren't you? You're cover junkies, I love. Them. Oh yeah. I love yeah, all right. Oh my yeah. People, my people, I love covers. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> getting people to pay attention. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah, we, and we especially love it when we get a great cover artist that also does the interiors, which is becoming rarer. Like yeah. when we catch some yeah. of these artists that that first did the inside, you're like, oh man, like it's so cool. Like I love like Sanford Green we had on, and we are able to he does the interiors or bitter bitter root too. So you're like, oh, this is awesome. Because you know what you're buying. You're not buying something that they, they're pulling yeah. a fast one when you open them up. <laughs> uh, all right, Mike, yeah, what exactly. you got? Finding the cover. The okay, so. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, go. So it's yeah, finding the cover. It's true. The yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. And if it's the same artist, then they already know the feel of the book and they, they have an mm -hmm. idea of what they want the cover to really look like. And when it's two different people that don't mesh well, mm -hmm. it, it kind of it, – it's apparent that they don't match. Yeah. And that's bad. We'll so you're right. That, that's a we'll tough one. We'll talk 100 volts at some point. But again, if John did the cover, Eduardo Risto was the interior artist, and they complement each other beautifully. You oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Similar, but very complementary artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Continuity helps too. Like when you got a team yeah, that works together yeah. for a while, it definitely, I think, uh, it the, helps. The cover is it's the rhythm of the book invested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's All see right. what you got, Mike. Okay, so I, I started. I'm, I'm channeling my uh, my inner Ben C and John Z today. I started with a Golden Age book. Um, this is a weird one. Uh, Secret Mysteries. It's just super creepy. It's got <laughs> this this creeper on this girl. I assume a prostitute, although I'm not positive. Um, but this is a weird one. This was originally Crime Mysteries uh, combined with Crime Smashers, and then this this one from Ribbage. Uh, was this just this one number 16 and then it went over to merit for three more issues and then got canceled so it's just one of those weird golden age ones that's hard to track um i wouldn't call it a classic cover but it's one that pops up a lot when you when you search for crime i've always just loved sort of the creepiness of the cover um, i love the cover and the I, word just, I love word balloon covers too Come yeah, so the word balloon. Well, that's the end of him. Now I'll take over his interests and we'll be in the chips, baby. I'm going to make millions. <laughs> yeah, you spoke too soon. Sharpie, I knew you would get away with this. I mean, that's great. It's 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 cool, oh, man. You can't you can't beat that. It's so cheesy, but I love it. Tales of the Incredible and Strange. Anyway, so that's just one of those oddities that I feel like most people don't ever really see. It doesn't pop up real often. So yeah, fun book. Seen. 1954 artist on the cover is Myron Fass, who I have never heard of. So oh. um, there it is. So I guess for my second book, I'm actually I was I was choosing Sleeper, um, but I actually have the t the first four issues. So I'm not choosing the one that Pete showed. I'll show <laughs> one for Mike because he's a butt guy. Um, <laughs> yes, but these covers are great. The entire series, I think it's like seven or eight books. I have the first four. And oh, just, it's 12. 12. So 12, it's 12. a great story, like where they have um, it's like a it's set with where superheroes. But this is all a detective story set with superheroes in the background. So mm -hmm. um, it's a really cool thing. I think it's a Wildstorm. Or, yeah. Is that what the WS? Yeah, Wildstorm, which mm -hmm. is odd to me because it they they talk about heroes almost like from the Marvel world. But they're uh, I, don't, I know it's not, but that's just what it looks like. But yeah, it's a. The art's great. Sean Phillips and uh, Ed Brubaker, I think, have been together for almost. This might have been one of the first things they did together. But, it is. Um, that's yeah. right in the heart of their uh, 
when Brew Breaker is doing Daredevil and doing uh, right before he does Winter Soldier and all that stuff. Uh, it's just a great run for him. Stuff together. Hmm? A lot of great stuff together. Yeah. I think and Sean Phillips just came out with um, something with maybe his brother. Uh, it's something with Texas. The Undone. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, was, but it. Was it, was it was something. It was something set in Texas. It has an old cop on the cover. Uh, just uh, issue two just came out, but it looks pretty good. It has the same great art with it. But, uh, all right, Axel. Let's see what you got coming. All right, so for your second pick, got here. Punisher Matt. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Tim Bradstreet, when you talk about continuity, Tim Bradstreet is the Punisher cover artist. Yeah. <laughs> he had done Marvel Knights Punisher before I took over Punisher and made it Punisher Max with Garth writing. Mm -hmm. And we decided to make it an R-rated book, like a Vertigo book, an R-rated book set in the real world. There'd be no Spider-Man, no Fantastic Four, no Avengers, just guys with guns. That deserve to die, <laughs> and uh, we got Tim Bradstreet to do covers. And the approach was the one of the rules was Frank didn't have to be on the cover. Many of our covers focused on the villains. One of my favorite covers from that run was a shot of a Rasta drug dealer. It was just a close up of his face, smiling with his gold teeth. <laughs> okay. Had a, lot, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of really cool covers. But um, Tim is one of the masters of just laying down deep, heavy shadows. You know? Yeah. Menacing shadows. When he, it's so photorealistic, photo too. Very, yeah. He photos, he takes a photograph of everything. He gets all and he casts them, he shoots them, and then he draws okay. everything. If, if you ask him to do an egg, cover of an egg, he would get an egg, he'd send it to the photograph, and he'd, <laughs> he's meticulous. So, awesome. was it, this Punisher? Does, did Anus write this just before the boys? Yeah. Like, because did he sort of get his yeah. like inspiration for that craziness? I don't know if it's been inspiration, but he had a real fun time doing The Punisher as an R-rated book. He wrote about 66 issues, I think. It was his masterpiece. Oh, wow. I think the best, the best run on Punisher ever. Yeah. yeah. Amazing Of course, run. you're not biased at all because you didn't no, edit no, it. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm> not, <biased. laughs> not at all. No, it's definitely a great run. Yeah. And th those covers, I love looking at those covers and just the darkness of – I mean, I feel like that Punisher – little section is what they ended up using for Netflix. Like that, that sort of idea of Punisher being this more realistic than dealing with all the superheroes. Because you couldn't do the superhero ness with the Netflix show. No. So, all right, Pete. Crime book. It's a crime book. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. What do I got next? Next, I went with this, uh, I think this is, well, I guess the artist is Matthew Southworth, but I went with something. Oh, yeah. Ooh, nice choice. I, I enjoyed the stories. I enjoyed the book. I, I liked the show. I fell behind watching the show, but mm -hmm. uh, it was good from what I saw. But I definitely liked this book when it first came out because, again, this is the kind of stuff that I also like to read this, you know, mm -hmm. kind of hard boiled detective, just street level, street level book. And just, you know, the, the art in here is gorgeous. The, the story's great. So I went with something. For, uh, how did I'm this show? Sucker, I'm sucker for three color covers too. Oh yeah, yeah, I love them. Yeah, me too. How did the show me compare to the comic? Pete, like I didn't, I haven't read the comic, so like I like the show before being a show. Like I, whether or not it has to do anything with comic. Yeah, they kind of lightened it up, I guess, like a little bit more because it was on network TV. But yeah. uh, other than that, they still kind of was you know, it wasn't too bad. I enjoyed it. I, I like a uh, uh, can't think of her name from uh, my or Smolders or yes. um, Hill. Is it yeah. Agent Hill in uh, exactly. the movie? Or uh, if you're a How to Met Your Mother fan, that's originally what everyone thinks. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I, I regret that I sold my copy of that book. I had a copy of that, and I, I sold it like an idiot. Now now I want to go read it, and I can't. <laughs> so you can buy actually, I agree one. with you about the three color the three color covers. That's why oh, I yeah. love Frank Avila so much. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost all three, maybe four color covers, um, mm -hmm. sometimes even two color covers. I just I love the way they pop. Simple line, simple design, great layout, really good aesthetic choices. And, I mean, it just shows – it just showcases a good artist that understands line. They stand and, out. Uh, you can't hide. You can't hide. It's, yep. it's either it's a good composition or it's not. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Totally agree. Completely agree. All right, Mike, what do you have here for us? All right, I went. Uh, I went with. I went with a, sort of a big boy. Um, I went crime suspense stories. Uh, uh, this is one of my favorites that I. Oh, I mean, I don't have number. I don't have number twenty-two. I wish I had twenty-two, but this is number sixteen. <laughs> to me, this is the next best cover in the run. Although there's a bunch of good ones. There's the drowning cover. Although I used that one already for underwater, so I couldn't use that one. Um, <laughs> I just. I just love how evil this cover is. It's so good. All this old DC stuff. I mean, <clears throat> I would I would own it all if I could afford it. But this is one of those covers that really just pops. It is just, it's just incredible, incredible uh, artwork. Great color. You're, you're, the um, you're the victim. You're getting killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, 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 you just got his hand. You just got his hand. No, please, no. In the bottom. <laughs> I, just, I just love. I love the the chances that that EC took with these covers and just how creepy and 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 just violent and i don't know they're it's just all good stuff i could i could own them all they're all great i also brought this one but i didn't use it another great one the dude chopping up his dead wife i guess i don't know oh, but just the maniacal look in his eyes just like so glad she's dead now i get to chop her into pieces uh, just just oh as ben c would say just over the top stuff man just so it's so so crazy but i didn't use that one but anyway that's my second one See, uh, the rest of us are going with like, okay, these are all modern crime books that no one that people like to read, but they're not. And then Mike pulls up, and this is the one that's a golden age classic that was uh, banned in the country. Uh, so it, it's a little unfair. <laughs> I just have to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris, he you going, know he, if you saw he was that, so you excited would when he knew the category was crime. Uh, well, oh, I'm going to yeah. go with another. Oh, I actually get to dive yeah. into my golden age. I'm going to go with another Brewbreaker book. He did so many. Uh, okay. This is Mike. This is probably another cover you're gonna have to chase. Uh, Criminal, the last of the. Have that one. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> cover. It actually goes all around, all the way to the back as well. Um, but it's just, I mean, once again, it's the pairing of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Uh, he, I, something about like this, this sort of style that he uses on the inside, where it's dark colors. It's like you said, a good colorist. Man, if they're paired right and have the right little combination, their stuff just looks great. Um, in, in my mind, like sadly, you can only think of one to two to three colorists usually. Uh, when I think of them, like, oh yeah, this is one that pops in my mind. Um, one that actually I think is on one of um, some of your AWA books. Uh, how do you say her name? Lowridge. Lowridge. Yeah. Lowridge. Like when I think of not just in the AWA stuff that you had had that in, I think I uh, did a uh, uh, Hawkeye maybe. Or uh, was it David Aha and Holling? Or is that Hollingsworth? Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth. But uh, Low Ridge did. I can't remember. I, I love her that style. I love uh, Hollingsworth style. Like that. They the way they bring colors out. When yeah. I think of different stuff, like and this is an example of that. I'm actually it makes me curious. I got to look and see. They use a limited palette. They mm -hmm. don't use any effects. They don't use many effects. They do too much blending. Yeah. They let the color speak for itself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, but it, it's certain artists that it works well with certain artists it doesn't work well so it's the combination it has to be the right story the right and crime it really works well like bringing out those darks and lights yeah because so. crime is more about setting the mood than it is just trying to be flashy or yeah you know, big big explosion well, especially noir i mean that's what noir was in the film industry when black and white was to use dramatic light and shadow to tell you know to tell mood and tone and and create environment and so the good artists understand how to work that in their art i think yeah, and it translates really well when it's done right all right well, and i think we're ready for your third book axel let's see what you got here for us what the pit? Oh, that's behind, behind, the behind the thoughts <clears throat> that's dave johnson so we launched that book there's a, a good crime thriller and uh the artist, the interior artist was Eduardo Riso, who's one of the best artists out there. But Eduardo, surprisingly, didn't want to do the covers. Really? <laughs> he said he liked to do the interiors. He didn't think he was a good cover artist at the time. I said, okay, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> so I called Steve Johnson. Johnson, an amazing cover artist that I thought had a very a comparable approach. And I said, Dave, look, we want to do covers for the book that look like black exportation movie posters. <laughs> Remember all those posters from the 70s? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Of TNT Jackson, Black Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, crazy. Hot colors, you know, montage. <clears throat> and we uh, give him interior pages, and he put together this montage here, which is exactly that. Black exploitation. Yeah. You see the, the, the Uber villain, Agent Grey above, protagonist for the series in the middle, you know, the various characters from, from the, uh, the series throughout. But it sends a real message at the time. This book is not Sandman. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not preacher. This book is about it's about the, the hood. It's about the city. This is a book about good guys and bad guys with guns. You know? Yeah. Not about fairies and unicorns or supernatural <laughs> or anything like that. You, you, I get the impression that you you lean a certain way with your books. You, Mike's over there crying because he's a Sandman. He that's the entire reason he started reading comics was he read Vertigo and Sandman. Well, I and love Sandman. Destroyed it. I love Sandman too. But the thing I knew when I got to Vertigo, I knew there's nothing I can fucking do to help Neil Gaiman. He does yeah. not need my help. <laughs> he does not need my help. But there's other people that might. You know, yeah. Garth Ennis might. Yeah, Brian Azzarello yeah. might. Because we like the same movies, the same films, the same influences. So I have something to say there. So again, I'm not disparaging yeah. that type of genre. I'm just saying it's not for me. Yeah. I'm not a big uh, fantasy guy. I'm not a big yeah. science fiction guy. Everybody in the world loves Star Wars. It bores me. <laughs> I, like, I, I like the alien. You just yeah. broke my heart again. Everyone loves Star I Wars. Go see I, like I like the alien. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, I was like, it's Star Wars, Aliens the movie when I was a kid, you know? So yeah. again, it is no, what it is. And that's, I love hearing that, like that when you hear, you talk to comic book guys and you go, there, there's comic books for everyone and there's yeah. stuff written. I mean, Mike is a giant Star Wars fan and he, he's Sandman. And then like, I'm a huge Spider-Man guy. Uh, Pete is a giant X-Men fan. Like we all have our different things, but then yeah. there's people that are diehard like crime books and the more realistic the Batman is, the better. And like those types of things, like when I think of Zerillo, like I think of Hundred Bullets and that little their their little pairing. But then I think of they did that little Batman run right there in between. Um, I'm trying, and the covers are great in that little run too. Like I think of when I think of when he does a book, man, he does a book and it looks a certain way. I think he he gets paired up with a uh, Bergamo a little bit too. Didn't he do uh, that Joker book? Libra Mejo, yeah, yeah, Libra Mejo, Libra Mejo, yeah. yeah. I yeah, butcher yeah. names regularly on this show, so it's just a, at least once an episode, I would destroy someone's name. It's, it's not, really bad when it's the know. person I'm talking gotcha. to. Yeah, got it. <laughs> uh, well, Bermejo just oh, – Bermejo, so Bermejo has a beautiful book out tomorrow tomorrow morning. He's got that Hellblazer uh, Rise and Fall B cover coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait I, to see that. In the Black Label. It's a gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous cover. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm really looking forward to reading that book. Speaking of old Vertigo, Hellblazer. Mm -hmm. All right, Pete, what you got for your third book? Oh, my last book. Uh, I had to make some decisions here, but for my last book, I really loved the covers on this three-issue series. And this was way before they actually ended up turning into a Netflix show. Or not a show, it was a movie. But I just remember seeing these covers, and I just had to have them. And I think these are Alex Maleev covers, the ones I went oh. with. Last Days of America. Oh. Like, yes. I just loved all three covers. I really had a hard time deciding between this and issue three, but I decided to go with issue one uh, yeah. for it. But, uh, yeah, just something about this. It's it's a great little story. You know, it's three issues. It, it you know, it, it gets its point across pretty quickly. It's just, I love stories like this, just crime stories. They're just, I don't know, They're simple. You, you can get right into them. There's not a lot of... You don't need too much setup. You just get thrown right in. You, you see it through you to the end. Not too much world building. World building. Yeah, you don't need it. You just get in. Yeah, yeah. Pete, if you haven't seen the, I'm sure you've seen them, but all the girl who whatever did whatever. Those covers are beautiful. Girl who kicked the hornet's nest. Girl, all, all those. Yeah, girl yeah. with the dragon tattoo. And there's some gorgeous covers in those runs too. Yeah, really cool. It's the hard case. Those those hard case crime books. Mm -hmm. I forget who published those, but yeah, there's like a Houdini one in there. Yeah. Hard case stuff is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are like the, the they're good. They're, Lodger, they're I think good. Uh, David Lapham did a like the Lodger was a nice little story. Yeah. Over hard case and yep. they had a couple of different things. But yeah, I like all that stuff. Yeah. All right, Mike, yeah, you're finishing this up great. with Beautiful. amazing golden age book again, or are you gonna break out something very super modern? No, no, 
No, something different. I'm I'm going I'm going copper actually. Uh, with something a little weird uh, from an artist that I never talk about, and I really should. A beautiful cover, uh, Howard Chaikin, oh, Black Kiss. Black Kiss yeah. uh, I remember you a, looking I think, for that book forever. Oh, I really was, because uh, I ran across it at one of our favorite spots, you and me, and then it was gone when we went back, and so I went crazy to look for it because I was going to meet Chaikin mm-hmm. at a show. This one, this is a sign. This is a signed copy. Um, but I mean, th- I, I mean, I love the cover for obvious reasons. But this is a really cool noir crime uh, series. It was reprinted a couple of times. It's all in black and white. So, like Axel, like you were saying before, it gives that it gives that noir feel all the way through, even in the interior art. The whole thing's done by Chaikin, so it has that kind of like impressionistic kind of feel throughout the whole book, and which really gives it great mood. Um, it's obviously kind of sexy as well. Um, this kind of un, un, uncensored stuff. Um, and I, I just love this. So I'm actually still on the hunt for the other covers. They're really tough to find, but, uh, yeah, it's one of my, one of my favorites. And it's one that most people don't talk about. Chaykin, Chaykin is one of those guys that, you know, he's famous for that star Wars number one cover that he actually hates. Um, <laughs> he was just under contract with Marvel to draw it. He felt like he was rushed and did it, but he, he doesn't want to be known for that. He wants to be known for this kind of stuff instead, the sort of dark noir crime kind of stuff that, that he's a little bit more well-suited for. So and I love that, that book. book. Was so, that mm. book was so controversial at the time. So controversial. Mm. Yes. And it's X-rated. It's X-rated, yep. but it's a wonderful story. Very controversial book. Yeah, I think the main character is a transvestite, in it, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Yeah. So, Transsexual. Transsexual. Yeah. 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 Definitely, right. definitely some some cutting edge right. stuff yeah. along the lines of Vertigo and Max and and all those sort of adult yeah. those adult lines. Okay, so Axel, you've dropped a little little hints of things that you worked on as editor and different things. So you've been a part and you did some Marvel Max and then you went to Vertigo. No, I was at um, Vertigo first. I was at Vertigo, where I did Preacher, Hundred Bullets, the Vertigo anthologies, Hellblazer, a bunch of books. And I went to Marvel when Marvel was in bankruptcy in 2000. Mm-hmm. I worked at Marvel as executive editor. Then I became editor in chief. I was editor in chief from 2010 to 2017. I worked on a lot of books, you know, Spider Man, yeah. X Men, Hulk, you name it. Oh, yeah. so, so, as executive editor, did you actually like get, look and read every, every book that came across your table? Like, or like, is that like where you go through and check, do the final checks on books or? Well, as an executive editor, I presided over a bunch of books, a group of books that included like the X-Men, mm-hmm. Spider-Man, and a bunch of other titles. So I directly edited those with my associate editors, mm-hmm. all directly responsible for those books from start to completion. Mm-hmm. As an editor-in-chief, I oversaw the line. Okay. So I did it. I only, I only actually edited a handful of books, mm-hmm. but, but I was involved in and aware of everything that was going on. All yeah. the macro planning... I had to approve and be involved in. Okay. So in the event, I was involved in that. But it was a different job. It was it was more administrative edit, editorial than hands on editorial. Okay. That's it. It's just it's one of those things fun. like it was fun. Okay. It was fun so stuff. like did you sit around the tables and do the like, okay, yeah. what's the big event we're gonna do for the Marvel summer event yeah. thing? Yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. yeah, we would do the big table, the editorial retreat. We talk about all the big events, all the big stuff that was going down, but also smaller, smaller retreats dedicated, Spider-Man mm-hmm. retreat, Hulk retreat, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Macro plan. I like to say it was when you, you set up carpools and you avoided car crashes. <laughs> There's so many people telling these stories. So you just want to make sure everybody's driving in the same direction, but they're not crashing. Yeah. yeah. That's how you end up with multiple universes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, so how, like the new thing you're in with AWA, that is it two years that's been around or less than two years? We, 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 we've been around, we've been around for a little less than two years. We launched our books the week of the quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we launched our books. So get this. So at AWA, we're doing two things. We're doing create our own books that are all centered in their own universe. We're also creating our own universe, okay. our own superhero universe, like Marvel or DC, only one that's rooted in now. So when I yeah. decided we were going to do this, I put together a creative committee. 
but I needed someone with a really big brain who could world build. I wanted Jim Michalczynski, who wrote Spider-Man and the movie, yeah. World War Z movie, and the Babylon 5 and Sense8. Yeah. We're old friends because he, he worked for me at Marvel, he worked yeah. with me. The problem was he retired from comic books. He retired famously. He said, I'm done with comic books. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> That's why I, I haven't like, seen his name until this recently. Yeah, so I called, I called Joe and I said, look, uh, Joe, I'm going to be in LA next week. I'd love to chat with you. He says, yeah, come on over. Have some iced tea. So I go to his house. I walk. I, it's his mansion. His mansion. My house, I mean mansion. So I walk up the, <laughs> I, I walk up the driveway. My, my legs are trembling, man. My legs are just shaking. I go in because I'm thinking, this is all or nothing. I say, so Joe, I want to create a, a shared universe, a universe for now, a world where people fight for the same stakes that resembles now. And we sat, and he was like, yeah, the DC universe, 40s and 50s, all the heroes are, they're all, they're all, uh, people, they're all, they're all cops, the law enforcement figures, mm -hmm. the Marvel characters, the 60s and 70s, they're all counterculture, counterculture figures. And no matter, they're all rooted in a different era. Let's yeah, do something sure. for now. So I said, I said, listen, if we're going to do this, I think it would be really cool if we can come up with an origin story for the universe. So rather than everybody that gets a power has to get it because they get bit by a radioactive aardvark or they got irradiated or something like that, one thing happens. I said, some event. And it would be good if it was tragic. If people die. So what happens is some people die and some people don't. But what happens is these people that get powers are born under a cloud. Mm-hmm. Born under a cloud of tragedies, so people fear them. They're left to wonder, who am I? Am I responsible for the death and destruction? Who are, you understand? And then also, if I'm Schenectady or Zimbabwe, I'm linked to these other people because we're all yeah. born at the same moment. And then Joe said to me, without missing a beat, he said, it'd be a pandemic. <laughs> he, said, he said, no one's scared of nuclear war. No one's scared of radiation. No one's worried about that now. He said, what people are worried about now is a super flu. People are worried about Ebola. People are worried about a virus that drugs here. I said, you're right. Let's do this. He scripts resistance number one a full year before it comes out. Mm -hmm. We launched the week of the, the, week of the quarantine. <laughs> I got so one around here somewhere. I couldn't find it. We're like, yeah. oh, my God, we can't believe it. We got, it's in the store. It's at the store. No one can go to the store. So they're like, oh, this is really bad timing, right? To launch a new universe. What do you do? So we said, okay, what we're going to do is we, we have a lot of confidence in our books. We're going to put them free online as webtoons, vertical scroll comic books. Yeah. We're gonna let people read them for free so they could see how fucking good they are. Part of my French. So we got all of our books out like that. People read them and people said, this is damn good. And so all the same people that were saying, we don't need another publisher. Or we don't need another universe. We're saying, we're saying this is really good. So we were really excited by this. So what happened is, luckily for us, the quarantine, the stores were closed for about two months. When yeah. they opened, there was enough buzz around the books that they sold the racks. Yeah. All of our books sold really well. Everything sold out. Every single book we've done has performed half budget. So none yeah. of our books, none of our books lost money or just broke even. They all made money. That's so awesome. after a really good start. And we're getting a lot of good feedback about the books as well. But again, we, we, had, we had a book about a superhero universe, a superhero universe born in a pandemic. We launched that book during a pandemic. So maybe <laughs> we're onto something. Maybe we are 21st century. You know? <laughs> well, like I remember. I mean, when, when the books. So, go ahead. When the, when the books hit the stores, I remember that, you know, because we got the. What's the what's the sampler called? Oh, yeah. oh man, I can't the have upshot. It. Yeah. The upshot now, yeah, the black and white. Yeah, so we I got the that upshot too. now, and I know a lot of stores just kind of kind of dismissed them off to the side. Wait, you know, hang on, more to come. And then the book started to come out, and they got this buzz around them, especially the first couple. And then all of a sudden, there was this fury to go back and get those upshot nows. Yeah, yeah, and everybody really right. wanted to go back and find them. And they're like, well, I don't know. We threw them away. They were freebies. Well, I don't know. So, I mean, now everybody <laughs> wants them, and now they're nowhere to be found. If the upshot so can, yeah. becomes the next Marvel Universe, those books are going to be worth something big. <laughs> well, yes. What I liked also, they were black and white. Like I know, because uh, you had, uh, I can never, I'm a butcher's, 
Joe, uh, him, him writing it, and you have the Diodato to do yeah, the illustration. And it was just gorgeous. But the, in the upshot, there was black and white as well, I think. It wasn't in color. Yeah, so it was like even that extra feature of like, ooh, this is a black and white. That's sort of cool. For the, and I'm not sure if it was the full issue or just like a partial issue in those it was upshots. Issue. We, wanted, we wanted retailers to be able to read the book and say, oh, my God, this is really good. I want this book. Mm. We didn't want retailers for the blind. When you the smart retailers would take the black and white, give it to their preferred customers and say, read this. Yeah. This is good, huh? And it, it worked. Because mm -hmm. what happened is that the buzz around the book was big. So when the stores reopened, our books flew off the shelves. Yeah. So far when you, yep. to that's exactly what my that's exactly what my LCS guy did. My 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 store owner said, Bring this home. You have to read this. Oh, and uh, and I did and I, I love it. Yeah, he was right, and he's done that. You know, he did that with the whole stack, just like you wanted, because he read he read it, he loved it, and then word of mouth, you know. And he doesn't recommend very many books, so when he recommends a book, people listen. Let me know who it is by email, or whatever you or whatever. I want to know who that is. Shout out to him. That's good thinking. We want retailers like that. That look, we appreciate greatly retailers that take a chance on on us. You know. Yeah. The retailers yeah. take a chance on I'll, us. I'll say it right. I'll say it right here. It's it's uh, his name's Judd from Starbase Comics. Starbase one five five two Comics. Franklin, Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah. Well, shout yeah. out to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not right. like, and then I think one of the things you've done is you've picked the, and we talked about this, you picked the right cover artist to go with your books. Like each of the different ones, and uh, Pete's actually going to bring up some of the different covers and books that you guys have coming out. Like I, I love, when I look at the list of artists that you have, I'm like, I like his stuff. I liked it when he did Daredevil. I liked it when he did, these other things. So I have a place already to place them. Uh -huh. um, so I think it's just, you have some just gorgeous cool. covers that complement yeah. your books. Uh, this is one that just came out, uh, I guess, oh. two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, that <laughs> talk, talk about that. This one has some, such a weird buzz to it, but I, I do like it. Well, that's Tim Bradstreet, the yeah. Punisher artist, and I picked him for a reason. Because I wanted this book to be understood to be a crime book a crime thriller. And I thought anybody is stupid will know, hey, wait a minute, that's the guy that does the Punisher covers. Mm -hmm. Now that, the bad mother there, the woman holding that machine gun is Tim's wife. <laughs> oh, nice. A fake machine gun in his kitchen, in his kitchen, I took the photo. That, that just made, I want to go buy this now even more just because it's his wife. I know. <laughs> listen, listen, I love listen. it. Can I get her to sign it too? No. Well, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's funny because when I when I first started that, the line, I sat down and I said, I want to do a book called Bad Mother about a soccer mom who becomes a punisher. You know, and then I spoke with Krista Faust, crime novelist. I said, hey, Krista, listen, we haven't managed to work together in the past, but I got this idea, soccer mom punisher, like, like baking, breaking bad with a soccer mom. And Krista <laughs> says, I love it. I love it. I love it. She said, how about this? Her daughter's That's kidnapped. Crazy. She has to save her, like in Taken. She has to save her daughter. <laughs> you you combine like all of my favorite <laughs> movies and shows into like, Probably I'll, I'll, I'll have to read this all. <laughs> our bad mother, our bad mother, she doesn't know Kung Fu. She's never shot a gun. She doesn't have any special skills. She's just <laughs> a housewife. And she has to go up against the matriarch of a crime family, this mob, mob boss lady who's amazing. So it's her Batman to this woman's Joker. And she has to find a way to outwit and and out and defeat this woman to get her daughter back. It's an amazing crime story. That's and awesome. Kim Bradstreet supplied the variant cover for issue one right there. Matt Diodato is the artist. It's an amazing book. Amazing crime book. If you're a fan of Punisher, Hundred Bullets, Taken, <laughs> Breaking Bad, as we see, our, our tagline is Baking Bad, you can see. Baking Bad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go grab this one tomorrow because I grabbed like Year Zero. I think I got Resistance, and then I grabbed uh, uh, Grendel, Kentucky today. Even though I'm not supposed to get it until tomorrow, but I grabbed it today. I think. And did I really, the second book for this one come out today or tomorrow, Wednesday? Comes out, comes out uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Okay. All right. Let's see what else, what's the other one you got. Some other ones, Pete. All right. After this one, I got Red Border. Red Border. That is, believe it or not, the same cover artist. That's Tim Bradstreet. Okay. This, this is one we went very, very, very minimalist, as you can see. Mm -hmm. This is a book, another crime thriller. It's about a me young Mexican couple 
that middle class have to flee over the border because they've been targeted for death by the Juarez cartel. So they, oh, this they are realistic. have to cross over the border, past that barbed wire you see on the cover, to get to safety in the United States so the killers can't get them. When they get over the border, they're rescued by a good old boy in a, in a cowboy hat who takes them to his ranch. And they're going to wish that they hadn't been rescued because oh, they realize that they stepped out of the frying pan into the fire. This guy and his family are bad news. Interesting. The best, the best bet to survive is that the cartel finds the ranch. So you can see the cover is about leaning into the, the idea this is a crime thriller set on the border. And right now, with all the stuff going on with Trump and the border wall, and yeah, uh, yeah. we've got kids That's in it. cages on the border, it's a very topical. Everyone knows what that barbed wire means now. Yeah. So we thought it was yeah. a very strong, strong and simple way of communicating yeah. the concept. Without yeah, I know that silhouette too of the fence with the barbed wire. Like it's just it, it, it catches your eye. It's so, just something, you know. So, so the again, writer of this, is he another crime novelist? Yeah, Jason Starr. If you haven't read his books, go out and buy one. Amazing okay. crime novelist. Okay, so yeah. that's like I recognize Will Conrad, but I was like, I don't recognize the writer. Um, so I, I like the fact that you pulled in some uh writers to write your crime noir. Yeah, both Krista and Jason are crime novelists. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Transitioning to comics, yeah. Nice. All right. I'll move to the next one. Let's see. What did I go? Oh, Old oh, Haunt. Ooh, oh. That's gorgeous. This is one of the first I love that cover. I acquired, yeah. That's Lawrence Campbell. With Lee Lorridge. So this is one of the first books I bought at AWA. I spoke with Rob Williams and all the masters, the writers. And the concept is very simple. It's it's Goodfellas meets Jacob's Ladder. It's gangsters and ghosts. Gangsters and ghosts. The three guys you see there are gangsters. They're looking to retire. They're looking to retire, step out of the business, sunset their, their organized crime days. But the problem is they've buried a lot of people in the desert in their day. They've killed a lot of people. they buried their bodies in the desert. And those people have not forgotten mm. their sin. So it's about them trying to retire, being haunted by the ghosts of their pasts, literally. So gangsters and ghosts. Gangsters and ghosts. That's and Lawrence it. Campbell came up with the concept that very simple. You got your three men, you got three greys, and our motto was, there's the old uh, uh, Sun, Sun Say line um, uh, from The Art of War, uh, when seeking revenge, dig two graves. So our tagline <laughs> was, when the past seeks revenge, dig three graves. <laughs> I like that. You got it right there. You, you have me a good fellas. You have me a good fellas. Jacob's ladder just was icing on the cake. Well, it's it's, it's, it's purely that one of my favorite overlooked movies. Yeah. It, it's yeah. Fine. This is about gangsters who are getting haunted by their past, literally and figuratively. Nice. <laughs> Amazing book. All right. Up next, I got a couple more. Uh, Rendo Kotagi. That comes out tomorrow. Issue one is out yeah. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Jeff McComsey and the amazing Tommy Lee Edwards. <laughs> this book is, do y'all remember Beowulf? Yeah. This is yes. Beowulf. Yeah. This is this is a retelling of the Beowulf story in the hills of Grendel, Kentucky, a fictional city in 1971. So it's a grindhouse movie. Hmm. It's like a 70s grindhouse flick telling Beowulf. Only our Beowulf is that woman in the front on the on the bike. Our Beowulf is a biker chick who runs an all-girl biker gang, an outlaw. Nice. She, she has to come home because her father is killed. Her father is ripped to pieces. And people say it was a bear, but she knows it wasn't a bear. She knows it was something else. So she has to come home to confront the monster from the past, the monster that lives in the mine. And that's where she has to fight against Grendel. So. Cool. I and I like the fact that everyone so far, all the stories I feel like have all been one to five issues. So yeah. they're short stories that you know. If they continue, it'll be a new Grendel yep. Kentucky Part Two. It won't be exactly. a continuing on type thing. I'm a huge yeah. fan of the seasonal model. Mm -hmm. I did it at Marvel as well, but I really believe in you tell a story, and it's your season one. I agree. It's a full story. It comes to an end, and 
There may be some loose threads you can pick up on later. Or maybe it's just over. Maybe yeah. it's over. You get no filler that way. That's why I like the that model. Like you, this is a story. We tell you a story, beginning, middle, end, and then we end it. We may follow up, but it'll be a new story. You don't get those filler issues where it's like, well, we don't have anything yeah. until it starts. You know, so that's our model. I think there's there's gonna be no filler issues because we're gonna do series when you guys want them. We're gonna do we're gonna do stories where it'll be the same creative team all time. There will be a an artist or anything like that. And it, so, that has you know, to be nice for the for the artist and for the writers to go, I'm going to write a six issue arc. I'm going to draw it. And then when I have the first four issues done, okay, we can go and get it out there instead they, of yeah, they deadline, deadline, deadline. Yeah. They own it. They're not rushed with a deadline. We set it up in advance. We don't solicit until we know we're going to ship monthly. Mm -hmm. Well, no late ships because we're ready. we got everything enough in the can. Maybe the whole thing is done. Yeah. The Kentucky is all done. All four issues are done. Nice. So nothing's going to ship late. It's all done. Yeah. It's just compiled now. So issues yeah. two and three are compiled. Issue four is getting compiled and colored. That's it. So yeah. But again, we wanted to have a we wanted the the, the cover to look like a seventies movie poster and to tell the reader very quickly, this is a grindhouse movie. So this feels a lot like the seventies movie posters in my youth. Yep. You know, yep. when I was a little kid, seeing the movie posters on Market Street in San Francisco, I wanted to see them being being too young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a. I love. I'm. So, I'm excited. To, I'm, I'm gonna try to check this one out tomorrow and go and pick it up. I got mine. I just. Got, I'm gonna read it as soon as we're done. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a variant cover there. That's my. Yeah, I got the, That's all that was left. Cheater. I didn't cheat. Cheater. It was on the shelf. <laughs> I didn't put it there. <laughs> but anyway, and I think our last one. I don't think is this one's not out yet. This is out next month. This is American Ronin by Peter Milligan and the amazing artist ACO who did Nick Fury for me back at Marvel. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the guy sitting there with the gun is the American Ronin. He's a super, a super spy who was uh, trained and works for a, a multinational corporation. He is there. He's the way that they wage war on other multinational corporations. He, he would mop the floor with James Bond or John Wick. <laughs> and he has amazing skills because what he does is that he, uh, before he takes you on, he tries to get a piece of your DNA. Once he's got a piece of your DNA, he ingests the DNA. At that point, he owns you. Huh. He knows everything about you. Uh, okay. He, he profiles you to the nth degree. So he, can, he, he takes you down knowing who you are. But in, part of the way, in knowing who you are, he learns to empathize with you. It's like he becomes you. So it's a painful process for him. Don't, it's not going to stop him from killing you. But again, <laughs> it's, it's a very complicated thing. So in, the, in this first arc, the American Ronin is hunting someone while he is being hunted by another agent who has his own powers, his own skills. Okay. So it's super agent versus super agent. It's an amazing, amazing book. So right? does it... Does ACO do the certain like what the cover is? Did, does the interiors have that sort of same feel? The one, two, three colors on a, a panel type thing? It's the same artist, but he, he uses a broader palette. Okay. The cover okay. approach was every cover is just a two color approach, very mm -hmm. simple, graphic, and clean, partly because we wanted the covers to look like nothing else out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all five covers are done. Every cover is a two color scheme, two contrasting colors, and uh, they're all very different. Mm -hmm. uh, interior art is it's very complex. Good. He'll get okay. a panel with you get a script with five panels on it, and he'll draw nine panels. <laughs> spread it out and make it bigger. I need more panels to make this work. Yeah. He's amazing. That's awesome. Like, Look, that's an artist books. I haven't really that's heard. Like I, I remember the Nick Fury book, but I just didn't place the connection. So that's really cool. He's amazing. He's like Steranko for the 21st century. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Nice. Yeah. Ooh, uh, I like it too. Yeah. I agree with you movie. on that one. <laughs> guys, you are not gonna, guys, you are not going to be disappointed. When you pick up this book and you look at the art, you'll be blown away. The okay. story is amazing. The story is amazing. And the art just takes it up to the, another level. All right. yeah, I'm in. Cool. So we just got to wait till next month yeah. for this one. Next month, so, yeah. Damn. All right. Well, <laughs> we're not done yet. I just got to mm -hmm. set this one up because I did these separately. Is uh, I do have one more book, but we have a. Uh, 
Whereas we didn't talk about the the one that the resistance is the one that everyone's been talking about, but we've, everyone's been talking about this one here. Year oh, zero. Year zero. Oh, yeah. All right. I so just, you have the covers there. You have the covers for that. Yeah, I yeah. do. I got. Yeah. So um, when I got to uh, start up the company, I wanted to do a zombie book. I really want to do a zombie book that took a global look at the zombie epidemic. I'm a zombaholic. I love zombies. <laughs> I love zombies. I'm constantly prepping for the zombie apocalypse. No joke. I'm not being I'm not being facetious. I am. I'm always prepared. <laughs> when I meet a person, when I meet a person, I think to myself, would they help me in the zombie apocalypse or would they, would they be a hindrance? You know? so I am very honest about you know. So the thing I want to do a zombie book and I book with Ben Percy about doing the book. That took a global look at the zombie apocalypse. What I wanted to do with the covers was I didn't want to do covers that, that yelled zombie, zombie, zombie. Yeah. I didn't want to do a cover of a zombie coming at you like, ah, or a severed or a foot. Or I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do covers that <clears throat> you're looking at a scene. It's normal. It might be beautiful, like this first cover you see there. It's beautiful until you look closer and then you see a detail. And that's like a record skip. Zzz, record skip. And you go, what? So here, the first cover by Korean, as you see, beautiful setting, you know, Pacific Northwest probably. Looking at these beautiful mountains, clouds in the sky, you zoom down, you see this RV, and then on the RV, you see a, a machine gun turret. <laughs> then what looks like blood, zombie killer. If you were to be standing and looking down and saw that thing, you go, what the hell am I looking at? What's going on here? Yeah. Has a zombie apocalypse happened? It has, you know? So you'll see the other covers as well. We have other covers, I think, to show. Oh yeah, I got I got all of them actually. So, so who did who did these covers? Kari Andrews. Okay. Kari like Andrews, Atari. Yeah, yeah. Kari like Atari. He did he did covers for me on Incredible Hulk back at Marvel. Mm -hmm. He did Iron Fist, mm -hmm. a living weapon for me at Marvel. Amazing artist. Incredibly he versatile. He's a writer, an artist, a movie director, and a yeah. TV director. He's very we great. Get, he's actually going to join us at the end of the month, and so. Oh, good. So he he seems like a fun fun guy, but the, yeah, of course he had, he struck gold with that stupid uh, Legends of the Dark Knight cover that everyone went crazy for the gold cover of the dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But these are year zeros. I'm show the next one. They're just gorgeous. Yeah. Well, I did sneak one in that isn't his because I went okay. with the B cover for number one as well. Oh, that's Mike Diodato. Yeah, yeah that's that's Diodato, I'm a fan of his, and I like yeah, it. That that's the one that I have. I have yeah, that. Diodato's one of my best friends in the business, and the best artists. And he's doing variant covers for almost all of our issue ones will have a Mike Diodato variant. Oh, wow. And they're all yeah. incredible. So yeah, this, is, great. this is this wraparound variant for your zero number one. So for the variant, we went completely the opposite direction. When Curry's cover shows no zombies, we said, let's show all of our heroes fighting a swimmer zombies. Like, mm -hmm. a, like, a Frazetta, like a Frazetta Conan berserker image. You know? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so that's what we did. Yeah. There you see it is. That's exactly what it looks like, too. The five characters having a, a mass of zombies. So it, it tells a very different, it's a very different message. It's very fun, arch, and over the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to put at least one of those in. So, so do you did great. you tell a difference um with the like the your first cover, like you said, it, it was a sneaky, you had to pay attention to know it was a zombie cover. The second cover, you obviously the B cover, you obviously know it's a zombie cover. Yeah. Like, could you tell a difference, like in per, in sales? Like, did did more of your retailers buy the B covers because they know, hey, this will sell because it's a zombie cover? No, or... no, we sold we sold more of the the original cover. The variant sold very high though. Okay. But people <laughs> ordered highest on the original cover. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We did. We didn't do very. Oh, it's funny in the years. aftermarket. And the aftermarket is the other way around. If oddly the yeah. A cover gets more money for some reason, I don't know. And it's not. I guess the B cover is rarer, but whatever. I have a. I have the B cover too. I, I went with what Pete went with. I thought the B cover was great. Well, that was the only one that was there. I didn't have a shot. The A was gone. I like the A cover too. I, I like the A cover too. I just I just chose the B cover. Yeah, I, I, don't I can't know. speculate what would be more valuable in the long run. I know that going matter. in. I no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, I wanted to make just sure want a good story. Fun. The variant cover offered a very different experience than the regular. Cover. Yeah. Very different yeah. feeling. No point in duplicating. Here we see year zero two, and there you see a group of uh, businessmen waiting for the train in Tokyo, Japan. So here you're in a different part of the world. 
very different setting. And the train just rolled up. Now, do they want to get on that train? Do you want to get on that train? <laughs> what exactly are you seeing there? Nope. What's What are you seeing there? I don't know. Doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> I, dig it. I, I really like these uh, these a covers because it, it does catch your eye it does make you double take it like oh, oh. And, it's like, it's, and i think they're all kind of funny in their own way they're scary but funny yeah. you see that and you say i'm not getting on that train no way i'll wait for the next one <laughs> <laughs> and then uh what i got number three there you see a family out <laughs> yeah. for a lovely Picnic in the park. Norman Rockwell painting. When I look at it. And then what's going on in the background? There's someone running in the background on fire. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Is that a civilian? Is that a zombie? I don't know. But I'm going to get up and get out of there right away, right? Only the youngest kid there notices. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good observation. Much, yeah, yeah. Mommy, mommy, why is that mommy, guy on fire? Mommy. How much instruction did you give to like the Kari to do? To, like, hey, we want someone on fire, or we had a casual conversation about the ideas. I sent him some sketches, my crude sketches of some ideas mm. that were that were for just the beginning. But he was the one that came up with all these ideas. Nice. All these ideas were his. Yeah. You know, what I do is I, I get people thinking about a way to go. Mm -hmm. Then they get out of their way. You know, like yeah. here's what I'm thinking of, something like this. Like I think I, I do a sketch of a of a tent. You know, I don't want to show as a sketch because it's so pathetic, but like a tent, two people camping at night, and inside the tent you see a, a guy and a girl necking with a lant lantern on. Mm -hmm. And then outside the tent you see a swarm of Shadows in the background like zombies. They have no <laughs> idea what's coming their way. But you don't know are those zombies? What's going on back here? But then he took that and he gave, he gave us a picnic because he's yeah. Andrew. <laughs> it works. That's a great. I mean, these covers are just awesome. Yeah, the, yeah you see that plane going down over yeah. the African plains. Do you have the, the surfing one, the last one, by any chance? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, this is a great one. <laughs> and then, yeah, Surf number five. five. That's just ridiculous. Oh, that's oh my god. That's a oh. yeah. that's and this great. one's not out yet, right? This one comes out next month. Uh, this is out next month, yeah. And that's one where I said, How about you show beautiful surf setting? You know, beautiful surf setting, sunset, and then floating in the water are these bodies. And then yeah, Curry said, Oh, you put a surfer in there. Do the surfer in there. Boom, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you don't see it at first, but then when it was like, oh, yeah. wait, that is a face and another face and a skeleton and, and bodies all over it. Like, oh man, that is just creepy awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. And and this is going to go into volume two, right? This is the cover, first cover for volume two that you're about to see. Boom. <laughs> yeah. This is an awesome cover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, man, that, was like it your, ants. Was it uh, World War Z? Like that reminds me of the zombies going up. Very much so. Up. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. It's got a similar thing. Crawling up the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And in this one, it's like. That's it, awesome. It looks like one of them grabbed the bomb of the helicopter as it was taken off, and they all grabbed onto him or her, and now they're all just hanging down. You know? <laughs> they won't let go. They won't let go. You do I, not want to be in this. And these are great. This refers to one of the characters in Year Zero Two. Okay. Year Zero Two, Year Zero Volume Two, is another five stories of people from around the world surviving the zombie apocalypse. Only it's a few. It's a few months later, so people have begun to get used to it now. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Year Zero Volume One took place during during the outbreak. It's all new. Yeah. I, I just I read the first issue and it's I love the fact that it was like okay here's a samurai assassin and a uh, Hispanic kid living in a sewer and a, 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 the guy who's you who's prepared for the zombie apocalypse and you're in your little fortress basement thing. Yeah, I Insta, loved all Insta, the different Insta, characters. Insta was preparing all his life for this. He saw all the zombie movies. He's like he's like a big and shit. He's never been happier. He's got his <laughs> pornography. He's got his video games. He's got his sex doll. <laughs> his house is fortified. He's got his, he's got his RV with the machine gun up. He's ready to roll. 
It's yeah. fun. He's having a great time. <laughs> yeah, great time. And what happens? He gets a call on the CB radio. It's a cute girl. Oh my God. <laughs> a cute girl. She'll talk with him. And he wants to meet her. So he gets in his RV to go meet her. To go save her. We'll see what happens. <laughs> What That's could possibly awesome. go wrong? What could possibly yeah. go wrong? <laughs> oh, nothing. No. <laughs> but no, it's the, I've I've enjoyed the. I haven't read all the books. I mean, uh, there's one also that we didn't have any pictures for uh, that I've loved the covers. Hotel. Oh yeah, hotel. Um, oh, hotel. Oh, yeah. I've yes. I've actually if you the rumor I I write an article. Rumor has it, and Mike actually featured. We featured the last uh, Kieran Grant cover, the little mm -hmm. freakish clown thing oh, and then yeah. the so good oh, oh that was a messed up cover and then you had the uh uh issue one had the girl laying on the bed and she's just typing away and i like i haven't read it yet but those covers have all been gorgeous and i'm just like what's going yeah, on right yeah, I, love them, I love them all curry did the first one and then Karun did two three and four okay they're all beautiful and it's a creep it's a really messed up book mm. it's a really really messed up book <laughs> i have to say um, i didn't catch the fact that it was hell Hotel with the yeah. O and T blocked out until I read the third cut, saw the third cover. I was like, Oh, and uh, I get an idea what's yeah, about that. Yeah. Kieran Grant little clown freaked me out enough to have me read the title the right way. <laughs> and that's funny because I did the same thing on the same book because I was finally featuring one of the covers and I'm like, Wait a minute, it's how do you spell that? Oh, 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 I get it. Okay, uh, but I so I had the same realization on the, the same issue as you did. Yeah, you have to excuse them, they're a little slow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're. <laughs> I'm giving you the mental finger, Pete. <laughs> Actually, you're not the first person. I, I think my partner Bill said, "Wait a minute, hotel? Hell? Hell? Wait, what's going on here?" Said, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Axel, this thank stuff's you so much great. for joining us today. This, thank the you. stuff, I've, we've learned a lot about just the industry. I love looking at your books. You, I also hate you because now I'm gonna have to go out and buy these books. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing you came on because <laughs> you're going to convince a lot more people to check out these the AWA stuff that you're doing. Um, and, and we're throwing well, up your you. the information about your stuff. It, it helps so much to have you talk about it. Look, we want readers. We appreciate yeah. any support we get because we know people have lots of choices. So try and put together the best content you can get for the money. The best creators they got a stake in what they create. They own it or they own a part of it, and they they have a lot of fun. We want, like you nailed it. We want every story to be complete. And if you tell, we'll tell it. If you guys tell yeah, us you want that. more, like you did with your zero, we'll tell more. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I, like, I, I'm definitely going to check out Grindel, Kentucky. I'll put, pick that. Now I'm going to have to go get Bad Mother. Um, like, Please. it's a, I love, I love your, uh, I love your excitement for all of it, too. It's so, it's Thank so, you. it's so sincere. And it makes, I mean, all three of us now, I guarantee you the first thing we're going to do when we get off here is go buy some of the stuff that we missed. And oh, cool. uh, I know I am. I already have, I I already have them up on my phone. I've been I'm kind of a dick. I've been over here kind of scrolling away. I'd love to hear more from you guys. And again, I'd love to come on again. We have mm. more books out. Yeah. Come back and talk again about more yep. books. And also, if you guys want to talk to some of our talent, I'm sure we can get more people on to talk about their work, what they've done, yeah. Quran. You're talking with Kari, it sounds like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, actually, Karan, Karan's going to be on. Um, he hasn't set a date yet, but it's sometime in November, hopefully. Cool. Uh, so yeah. I'm stealing your talent. We'd love, we'd love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we, would love, we would love to talk to you again, though. This, this yeah, has been a lot of fun. I'd love to talk to you again. To. So let's do it. Be happy to. All right. Great. Cool, guys. All right. Thank See you. Again. Thank you so See very you. much. Take care. See ya. Have a good one.